we have uh, my pancakes drive the girls to my Yugo. I don't really know what that... Hello and welcome to the stream. Twitch tells me I am now live. Uh, and I do apologize to MZ Plays for having to unhost her so I can do my own thing here. Um, okay, why does this not look right? Oh, actually, maybe it is right. Never mind. Um, my Twitch window looks a little bit different. Uh, the time and date stamp is not at the top left like it should be. Uh, but who cares? I don't. Uh, never have, never will. Um, okay. So, here's our README stream for today. Now, yesterday we came up with this uh, really clever idea. Well, we didn't come up with it. Somebody else came up with this really clever idea. Um, and, and actually, let's see if we can find it again. This is good. I'm not totally not prepared. Okay, here we go. This is the um, this is the one we were looking at yesterday, where we said um, if you can, you know, if you can find the plane in which the two points, the destination, and uh, the uh, the point where you leave from, the departure point, and the middle of the Earth are in the same plane, not necessarily, um, not necessarily the point where you're looking at, which is point C, but the middle point of the Earth. So the Earth center and the two points, you can create a plane, and then what you could do here, as he points out. Uh, you can use cross products to find uh, A and B are not necessarily perpendicular, but you can use cross products to find uh, two vectors that are perpendicular and then combine them with sine and cosine. And I think it gives an example here. It's very simple. Um, uh, let's see here. Kind of wish I'd been more prepared. But actually, I don't because I'm wasting your time and I'm, that makes me happy. Uh, he does say it here, actually, somewhere. Um, wow. And it's not there. He actually says it somewhere in a more um, concrete way. Okay. Um, this is it. Um, I think this is it. At least one sec. Um, direction from vector. It's not difficult. Whoa! He gives actual code. Booyah. Uh, let me see if we can find the one that was closest to what we want. Uh, not that. And the general idea is if you have these two perpendicular vectors, um, <sighs> You can uh, the d n and the d e are the two normal the two vectors. One of them is the original vector, the other is the perpendicular. You can use this uh, to to basically generate the entire great circle on which the two points lie. Of course, if you're only taking part of the journey, um, you don't have to take the whole great circle. You only take as much as you need to get from point A to point B. And I think this is another indication of uh, of how you do this. Except now you stop at point B. You find that value. Of of uh, of D that stops you at point B. Um, so I'm kind of surprised. I thought we had a better. Um, I thought we had a better uh, map for that. Uh, the better page for that, but I guess we don't. Okay, so that kind of sucks. Um, and then we did go through our f uh, finding that Turf JS is useless to us, but we had to go through it because that is what programmers do. Um, and then we found MathJS, which lets us do cross products in a simple way. Of course, we could always have coded it ourselves, but, you know, whatever. Um, and this is one of the uh, parametric equations for the great circle. Oh, this might be the thing we're looking at, actually. Hang on. Yes, here it is. Sorry, this is the one I was meant to look at. If u and v are a pair of orthogonal unit vectors, then is a parameterization of the unit circle that lies in the plane spanned by these vectors. That's exactly what we want. That's exactly what we're doing. Um, so we don't need this one anymore. Waypoints, we, we, we're not going to use that special library. Converting strings to numbers, I, we don't really need this. It turns out JavaScript will let you use a string as a number uh, if it can figure out that you're trying to do that. So the, question, uh, the questions I had here were, of course, um, and again, we could, we actually did start solving the guy's uh, problems, the Mr. Uh, Mr. This Guy's problems. Uh, here in Replit, and we even showed that uh, you know if you have uh, two stations, 
uh, we could find the um, we were going to find the uh, the waypoints along between those two, two stations, and then uh, use an exhaustive search to find the uh, facilities closest to those waypoints. But very tragically, I got bored. So instead, I thought to myself, um, can we use this vector idea to come up with a simple formula uh, for um, to give that other question that we wanted to answer, uh, the other, other two actually, um, to say if you know of a given point C, what's the distance between C and your geodesic or your line on the Earth? And uh, this is probably more accurate because we're on the surface of the Earth, we're not in, you know, straight Cartesian three-dimensional space. So that's one thing I had want to want to get a look at is to see whether we can use this sort of cross product vector stuff because it actually comes out pretty simple in in the math comes out pretty simple with cross products so we might be able to nail that and then the other problem question I had is um, we're having a lot of problems finding a single formula to solve this equation uh, that is to say give it the point on the uh, on the geodesic uh, that has um, that is closest and then also the distance between that point and the point that you want but that that part is easy finding the closest point is harder um, and we can't it's hard to find a closed form formula partly because um, if X is sort of like you know off the edge of the geodesic over here over here the closest point is going to be one of the endpoints that's not the only difficulty we looked at some of the formulas uh, a couple of days ago and we saw that they were very very uh, well hideous they were very, very ugly. Um, so the question I asked myself is, can we use this vector idea to create a simple formula? That's part one. And part two, instead of just giving one formula to give the answer, because everybody else has just given methodology, they haven't given formulas. If I could even give like, you know, say, well, run this function, take the result of this, you know, do this, and then run it through the second function, run it through the third function, and there's your answer. Not as good as having a single function. Um, but, and the other nice thing is I may be able to convert this into multiple languages. I don't think I have a hope of converting the, the full formula into multiple languages because I don't, I think we'll need an if-then condition. And the, uh, the code that I've written to convert between languages, the BC Rosetta code, really only handles simple functions. It doesn't handle branching. Uh, although technically you could argue, and in fact you could make a really good argument, that if-then statements are actually a, a type of uh, function which they actually are. Mathematica models them that way. But still, that's getting ugly. Okay, and then I came up with another idea which turns out is wrong. I already tested this. Instead of having to find the perpendicular, what if we just take the two vectors to the points, combine them with sine theta, cosine theta? It turns out the, um, the, the, uh, the problem with that is that these vectors can be longer than length one. Um, there might be a way around that. And this would also, of course, be a, a real stretch of the uh, the circle. It would mean that these points here from, uh, you know, from here to here would be treated as though they were 360 degrees apart because we're going all the way around, and that's also probably not a great idea. I mean, in some sense, we don't care about the portions of the circles that are outside of this geodesic and, you know, the, the rest of this great circle, but we, I think we do sort of need it. Um, and then uh, something else I was going to mention, um, sometimes it's really hard to prove formulas are equal to each other in in math, thematica, and mathics, and even in math itself. Uh, one way we could do that sometimes is to just plug in a bunch of random numbers, s multiple sets of random numbers, and see if, that if they're equal in under those conditions. And if they're identical for a lot of random numbers, a lot of random conditions, you can be pretty sure that they're actually equal in real life, even if uh, mathics or mathematica can't find that simplification. Okay, so I think I've now uh, babbled incoherently of what we're going to do, and uh, let's go ahead and do it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the vector idea for a simple formula, and I think we have, um, so I keep saying I'm going to give up on mathics, and yet I qu don't quite do it. Um, oh, yeah, and I think I actually have this under um, BC Geodesic, GeoVantage? Oh yeah, this was actually a question about whether or not uh, Republicans have an unfair, or Democrats have an unfair geographical advantage, and the answer to that is, I don't know. Okay, hang on, we, we do have, uh, bio, well, you know what, I think it's actually loaded in, we can just do this, uh, M. 
Okay. And this was the matrix we found that pretty much um, takes this solution here and makes this plane the XY plane, uh, which makes things a lot simpler. But um, um, but the matrix itself is very complicated. In order to do that, we need all of this crap. Okay, so let's go ahead and start some work down here and say work below 6 January 2020, which is what it is here, and even in Greenwich for another hour, another 56 minutes. Okay, so uh, one thing I found out, and I think I might still have it here, and not that. Um, yeah, if we let A1 be this point, and A2 be this point, um, they're not perpendicular to each other. But it's easy to find a vector that is perpendicular to both because that is called the, uh, the cross product. That's the definition of the cross product. Um, and this actually looked better when I was using uh, X, S, SX, you know, uh, X, Y, and Z coordinates instead of using uh, spherical coordinates. Let me go ahead and do that again. Let's just say S equals SX, uh, SY, SZ. Or if you're British, learn how to say the word Z. And ty is equal to this. Um, now I have not indicated here that uh, these are unit vectors because they touch, you know, from the center of the Earth to touching the sphere. So they're uh, they're length one vectors. I'm not mentioning that here because I think it's not going to be an issue for us. Okay. So now we want to find a vector. Uh, we want to find what plane these are in. But one way to do that is to find the vector that's perpendicular to both of them. And that vector is by definition, not by definition, but definition of the cross product one of the definitions of the cross product, it's going to break everything. So, and, whoa. Oh, once again, because I re-secure shelled, we lost the current directory. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say, um, S and T are these suckers, and then we're going to find the cross product. Uh, and there we go, and it's not very difficult looking. Uh, so this is the vector that's perpendicular to the plane in which S and T are. Uh, we don't really want that vector. It turns out that vector is not not actually useful to us. We want the vector in the plane that's perpendicular to S. But we can get that by taking this vector and crossing it with S. Because now we have a vector that is um, with S. Now we have a vector that's perpendicular to the vector that's perpendicular to the plane, so it's in the plane, and it's perpendicular to S because we're choosing to be perpendicular to S. And what's amazing is this formula is not that ugly. This formula is actually quite reasonable. Um, so let's go ahead and put this in here and let's put this in here too. And again, you might be saying, well, shouldn't you be doing this better? And really there would be, it would be nice if there was a way to sort of save this stuff a little bit better than the way I'm doing it now. Um, but for now, we'll, li we'll live with this. Okay, so now that we've got these two vectors, these, um, uh, and I guess we should probably give this last one a name. Um, I guess perp would be a good name because um, it sounds kind of dirty while at the same time having the meaning perpendicular, which is actually what it is. It's a perpendicular vector. All right, so there we have it. Um, so now the claim is that our great circle is parameterized by S times sine theta plus perp. Nope, I always get this wrong. I, I mean, it, it works either way, but it's easier this way. Cosine theta times perp times sine theta. And that will start out when, you know, when theta is zero, it'll start out at S. When theta is pi over two, it's going to be the perpendicular vector, and then so on and so forth. This is actually very, a very nice sort of parameterization of, um, very nice sort of parameterization of the great circle on which these two points lie. Um, so now the question we can ask is, um, and now is, now is where we kind of want to say, okay, uh, why don't we use, oh, Jesus Christ, maybe we shouldn't do this. Does this simplify? I, I, I vaguely remember this simplifies. Uh, and I vaguely, oh, it does slightly, I guess. Um, but not a hell of a lot, actually. Um... I guess you could factor some stuff out and so forth. So now the question is, could we replace S, uh, X, Y, and Z with, uh, and T, X, Y, and Z with spherical coordinates? Just say, you know, T, X is uh, uh, blah, cosine, theta, sine, phi, or something. 
Um, and I thought that would be easy to do, but maybe I am uh, maybe I am biting off more than I can chew here. Um, another way to think about this is we actually now have a three vector system, one pointing towards S, one pointing perpendicular to S, but in the plane of, of uh, S and T, and one perpendicular to both of those. We have a, we have a um, because cross products yield right-handed products, we have a right-handed coordinate system. And we can certainly use that to create a matrix um, that multiplies um, all of these things. Um, in other words, matrix that will convert this uh, S and T to be both in the XY plane. It, you know, we'll tilt the plane until it's the XY plane. Uh, the problem is, I'm beginning to think that's going to look, for, for one thing, um, the basis vectors we have go the other direction. They convert the XY plane into this plane. So we need the invert, inverse matrix of that, uh, which could get really ugly. Um, the other question is, from this sort of simple-ish um, formula, uh, if we know another point, if we know QX, QY, QZ, can we find the minimum distance uh, using this parameterization? Now we've got to be a little bit careful here because for some values of theta, we are beyond uh, we're beyond point T, and we're you know we're looking um, let's see if we can find it. We're looking at um, yep. Let's see. We're looking at points that like are over here or over here. Um, I think, however, that is not a huge deal. Um, I mean, we need to we need to cover that case, but but we we can f figure that out actually by looking at the uh, uh, the dot product of a and b will give the cosine of the angle between them, um, or s and t in our case. Um, there's that, and because they're both unit vectors, we don't have to divide by the norms or anything. It's very very simple. Um, and what this will tell us is well, the um, the arc cosine of this will tell us how far along the uh, how far along this angle we can go, starting here, going here, before we hit B, and after which we are we're sort of off the geodesic. So, so this, this, that's all. Uh, I think that's not a hard thing to find out. Um, and so our first formula. Oh yeah, right, right, right. So now what we want to know is if we have this. Um, uh, let's give this a name. Let's give this a name called location at theta. And that just means when you choose the angle theta, how far are you between S and T or beyond S and T, as the case may be. OK, and now we'll give uh, given any point Q, Y, Q, 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 X, Q, Y, Q, Z. Um, OK, this might get a little bit ugly. We want the norm of QX, QY, QZ minus, this is, um, nope, got to be careful. Now, we're assuming QX, QY, QZ is a unit vector because it's on the surface of the sphere. So to find the angle that it makes with any one of these points, uh, we just do with the dot product. We don't even need to divide by the norms because the norms are 1. Um, so this would be the... Um, already getting unhappy about this by the way so this is the dot product and we want to find the value of theta that makes this minimal yep might have bitten off more than I can chew here uh, and we're not even gonna well let's okay, okay, okay this is um dist of theta this is the distance at you know given theta to QX QY QZ uh, uh, I'll call it angle. It's really the spherical distance, but a spherical distance is an angle. And it's confusing because we want to use dist to mean straight line distance. So anyway, here's our angle of theta. Angle of zero should give us the distance between x and z. Angle of pi, I'm curious what this gives us actually. Nothing super cool, unless that simplifies. I don't think it does actually. Yeah. Um, now, if we, if we knew the angle of between S and T, which we do, um, hmm, that's interesting. Angle of zero is definitely, uh, yeah. So log zero is this, but log one is not T. Yeah, that's, that's that. Um, so it would be the log, the arc cosine of uh, S and T that should give us T. I don't think this will do it, though. 
Um, yeah. Um, that really should work out to be T. Uh, mm. But, okay. It worries me slightly. Um, I guess we have to expand that. I don't know if no it knows how to expand, but it does. Then we can simplify the expansion. Sometimes this works when plain simplify doesn't work. Uh, okay. Bad things have happened. Um, I guess at some point we could tell it that the norm vectors were uh, were one, and that might help with some of this stuff here. Um, but for right now, let's let's take a chill. Um, so that's an angle. And so now we want the d-angle theta. This is um, this is we where we measure the uh, change in the angle as theta changes. The change in the angle between uh, the great circle and um, qx, qy, qz. Okay. Uh, that still looks really nice. So let's go for broke. What value of theta gives us a zero here? thinking. Oh, it does not want to solve that one. Well, it was worth... Wait, 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 wait. Ooh, that's wrong. Sorry, d ang theta. I wasn't defining anything there. Dun, dun, dun. Ta -da! Will this work? Will we have a closed form solution? Uh, if not, we know how to... I think we know how to get one anyway. Um... Okay. I'm excited. Simplify, please. I'm surprised it found a solution. Yep. Don't like how long it's taking. Mathematica will store results sometimes to prevent, you know, recalculation. I don't think Mathix does that. So I probably should have assigned that to a variable. All right. This is so big we can't even see it, but thanks to screen, we can go back and... Holy crap! And there you have it, the lovely closed form formula. I think this is actually uglier than the freaking matrix. I mean, the matrix we were going to create for, uh, uh, that normalizes the position of S and T to be on the equator. Mother of God. Okay. Um. Wow. Okay, well, let's see. S, simple. Um, perp, not as simple. Let me see if I can expand it and it looks better or worse. That doesn't really improve it. Yeah. All right, it's going to be ugly. It's probably a little bit better looking like this. So we have that perpendicular vector, which is which is good. We have S, and then the... P well, you know what? We naturally need to look at the... Uh, perpendicular to the plane vector, I went a little bit too fast here, perpendicular to the plane vector is just the cross product of S and T. That's what forms the z-axis, so to speak. Um, that's not too bad either, actually. Um, so these would be our three vectors that would get changed back into, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, of course, doing it this way gives us the forward matrix for them. We, we would need to invert that matrix, and, I, and I'm hesitant to do that because it's going to be ugly. Although I have made a little bit more of a resolution today to allow ugly things to happen uh, because I think that there's a fundamental ugliness in this problem. I don't know why, but I think there's a fundamental ugliness in this problem uh, that we just need to kind of uh, barge through and get some data going. Um, we need to barge through, write some functions that are ugly, 
If we, if we want a simple solution, you know, we sort of conversely need ugly formulas. Uh, the other option would be to do this one step at a time and show the guy how to do it la that way. Um, but again, um, if I want to convert it into multiple languages, I need, I need functions. I cannot have multiple functions. I need a single function. And again, you could argue that a, uh, multiple functions are a function, but again, not, I cou couldn't handle them like that is the issue. Okay. So we have the, I don't know, this could be very ugly. I mean, we could, I guess we should do this right over. S will be the vector that is the x vector. Perp will be the vector that is the uh, y vector. And the one that's perpendicular to the plane will be the z vector. That's a matrix. Okay, sorry, inverse of this matrix. And now, this matrix is invertible in most cases, uh, and I'm sure maths will give us the... Yep. They may notice that this looks a very similar to what we had before. Uh, let me go ahead and assign it a value here, because we're going to want to mess with it. It's going to look very similar to what we had before, which has all sorts of hideousness in it. Um, now, the only hope here is that it simplifies a little bit. Although, looking at it, I'm not at all confident. Um, oh, that actually wasn't too bad. Oh, wow, and some of these numbers will, will, um, now I don't know if it'll accept this notation here. I don't think it will, actually. Um, no, I think that made it worse. Okay, and there's other ways of doing that too, so we can we can look at that real quick. Um, the the problem is, are we actually working our way back to this guy? Because um, if we are, there's no point in trying to, uh, you know, trying to. Um, there's no point in trying to create a better solution than this, if we're just going to end up getting it back. Uh, with the slight exception that we may be able to get rid of cotangents and cosecants and like this and replace them with more normal um, functions. That might be the only advantage there. Okay. Um, right. So now we have, um, we have M defined. Let's get that in there. Um, and I guess we, in a minute we're going to actually check it to make sure it does what we think it does, but that's not a serious concern yet. Um, and I guess... Ah, simplify. It's equal to the simplify of this. Okay. And I might end up using Wolfram Cloud here, but I'm going to try to stick with Mathics for right now. Okay, and then we also know that things like S squared, you know, this is 1, because the norms are 1 here. Um, and then there's, you know, one thing we can do is we can say M, given that uh, S, zero. okay, I don't think it's going to accept this. S Z squared goes to 1 minus S X squared minus S Y squared. I don't know if it's going to accept that, though. Oh, it did. Okay, cool. Um, it's still very ugly, but we can do the same for T now. I'm not. I'm not seeing a great deal of goodness coming out of this. Yeah, let's simplify that. But I, I, I am. I'm seeing that we're going to get stuck here. Looks like we're going to get stuck here. Hello, Fierce Crocodile. I am doing well. How are you doing? Thank you for coming into chat. Uh, once again, we are embroiled in doing completely useless stuff, trying to figure out matrices and vectors and all that stuff. Hope you had some chicken today. Yeah, I did have some chicken today. 
Um, and you know, it, the best chicken is the ones that you, uh, you raise at home. So not only did I have my chicken today, but before I had my chicken, I choked my chicken. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be here all night. Um, so this is not coming out as cleanly as I was hoping it would come out. Um, and it's again making me think that maybe this hideous thing, despite what it looks like, is actually the simplest, um, is actually the simplest solution, which is hideous. Um, and... Let's see, I guess another way we could do this M is uh, we could finally convert S and uh, T into uh, spherical coordinates, which is what they are. Oh, you added me on LinkedIn. Thank you. I guess you should stop. Well, yeah, I mean, you can troll all you want. I did study math. Yes, I do. I have a doctorate in mathematics. Um, you can troll me all you want. I mean, just wouldn't use me as a reference, you know, because I could be like, oh, you know, when it comes to uh, making black cock jokes uh, and eating chicken, this guy's great. Everything else he's going to suck at. So, uh, so yeah. Um, no, you seem like a nice guy. I don't know you well enough to give you a reference, but I wouldn't uh, torpedo your career unless I was a little bit bored. Okay. So let's see. Let's. I think we can actually maybe. Um, yeah. See, the problem is if we change S and uh, T into uh, spherical coordinates, we're gonna have a real mess here with multiplying together some stuff. So I'm thinking here, um, how we can do this. You, uh, I'm so freaking tempted to use this. Um, I guess the only real question I would have with this is, is this really the simplest this formula will become? Did you study computer, wait, did you studied computer science, hopefully math one day? If you're asking me, uh, I studied CS, that is pro-math, well actually no, computer science is math. Uh, computer science didn't exist when I was uh, studying. Uh, it wasn't considered a field. It's mathematics, but it wasn't considered a field on its own. Um, but yeah, computer science is actually very pure. I, I mean, some people confuse computer science with computer programming. Um, but they're not really the same thing. Computer science is a much higher level abstract way of thinking. Uh, you create virtual machines, like Turing machines, um, and you know, you study the properties of those. And that's, to me, way more interesting than actually using a real computer, although I'm saying that while using a real computer. So you, I guess you got, got to kind of see where, uh, kind of see where you're going. If your math sucks, um, uh, then I maybe Computer science may not be the way to go. You could still be a good programmer, but computer science, you're going to be doing things like, uh, you know, looking at the uh, theoretical speed of algorithms. Uh, you're, I don't know if you're going to be writing a Turing, machi Turing machine transition di uh, function. Turing machines are very, very functional in nature. Um, I in fact, they're literally defined by functions. So I guess it depends on how pure you want to be. Uh, maybe, I don't know if there's such a thing as applied computer science. I mean, there might be today, but you might want to go into that level, or or you might want to just get better at math. I did study CS, handed in my PhD thesis last month. Wow! So, dude, you're in. So you must know some math. I mean, how could you? Uh, how could you get a? You know, I assume you have a master's already. How could you get a master's in CS without knowing? I mean, th there's a lot of math in computer science, especially a lot of algebra, abstract algebra there. Um. So, dude, you're either. You're either, um, what's the opposite of uh, catfishing? Mermaiding? You're pretending like you don't have any skills, but you do? Um, or you took some sort of really weird computer science course, uh, courses that don't involve math somehow. Or maybe you didn't recognize they were math. Um, but anyway. Okay, so we're still uh, caught up in the depths of this piece of crap. Um, Jesus. I need a brilliant idea from the peanut gallery, please. So someone come up with a brilliant way of uh, 
solving my problems of finding a simple way to find the point that we want um, and ideally maybe even the points that are like you know uh, waypoints along this uh, along this vector um, um, all right let me now this is going to be a very big long shot here since Mathematica can't simplify this the odds that uh, Mathix can are effectively zero okay Wow, I kind of wish I'd, um, oh no, no. Did we assign that to something? Yes, we did, full math. Okay, and the one bad thing about math, uh, mathics is um, you cannot leave blank lines unlike li like you can in mathematics. So full math equal, and then I have to copy this whole thing at once. Um, no blank lines allowed. Okay, now let's see if it takes that. Okay, good, it knows what full math, math is. Uh, and now I'm going to try to simplify this. And if it simplifies, honestly, I'll be impressed. Because this is pretty much the simplest form. And this is still very ugly, by the way. Um, and this won't simplify it. I would run it through Wolfram Alpha, but uh, I mean, not Wolfram Cloud, but I think we did that. And um, hmm, it got a little bit simpler. But okay. Alrighty. Okay. Now, vaguely remember, we still need to prove the Riemann conjecture. You know, yeah, that's like a lower priority for us. I mean, that's so easy. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do that like one day on a short stream or something. For right now, we'll stick with the hard problems. Um... Now, I think in BC lib staging, I actually once uh, did declare a function that did some of this magic. Um, I did a hell of a lot of other functions, didn't I? It's VZ to XYZ. Ortho, slippy, decimal. Here it is. Directly from Mathematica via BC Rosetta. If the world is rotated so C long, C ladder now at 0, 0, return the new coordinates of long lat. Um, the only problem is there's more than one way to do that rotation. Um, so this, while correct, is not particularly useful. Uh, lat long to ortho. So the thing I'd hoped I'd done is find out where you could transform a map if... Um, do you study Chinese or do you just like Chinese food? That's like a huge world of difference there. I like Chinese food and I, I do study the language uh, Kung Pao, Beijing beef, number seven. So, you know, that's that's how much Chinese I know. The guys at the Panda Express here speak Spanish, so not even close. Okay, let me go ahead and do a... Um, uh, actually, BC get grep function, star.js. Let me see what functions they're defined. I don't think they're going to be... Oh, okay. And I would like to get them sorted. And I think I want function only if it's at the start of a line. So this is that. Apply, bound, convert, create, encode, grid to distances, image tile to lat long, initialize twice. I do study Chinese for fun. Guess like just like you do Stack Overflow questions. Well, you know, I think there is a Chinese.stackexchange.com uh, where you could go and help the uh, Chinese people. I don't. I don't actually know what they discuss there because you know I can't read Chinese. Um, to center that long to image ortho. Image lat raised image tiles map to tiles. Uh, merge hashes place buffer on map. Yeah, nothing in here does quite what I want. So now, this is what full matrix does that if I if I've done it correctly and I think I actually have um, if you give it uh, the coordinates theta 1 phi 1 1 it should get you back to um, should get you back to 1 0 0 or something like that something very basic 0 0 1 maybe I think it is 1 0 0 
Um, I should look into how to transform coordinates to a sphere. That always confused me. It's not that difficult, actually. Um, you basically first the theta angle. Let me just let me just do a quick look. I think on sphere parallel they, they do. Yes. In fact, the lines of longitude on Earth are all parallel to each other, but they meet each other at the north and south pole. Lines of latitude are also parallel to each other. They don't meet. So they sometimes meet, sometimes they don't. Uh, that's uh, non-Euclidean spherical geometry. Say that five times fast. Okay, this did not apparently simplify to what I wanted. Not good, but I think it. I think it actually does. Oh wait, 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 wait. Do I need to say theta one? And I need to spell those out. Um. Yeah. Beautiful. Now theta two phi two one won't will still go to uh, the equator, but it won't obviously be on the uh, on the same point. Otherwise, they'd be uh, this wouldn't be very useful. So the uh, the question we're coming to words, um, and so what we should see here is like a zero value in the z axis, which is what we're seeing here. Um, okay. So the qu the big question here, this is the wonderful transformation we have. The big question here is, what does this do to an arbitrary point? Um, in other words, an arbitrary theta three phi three. Uh, where does that go? And boy, oh boy, is this going to get ugly. So we first, it's the full matrix. It, we multiply it by the spherical transformation of theta three. But the problem is, this actually gives us Cartesian coordinates. So we actually want spherical coordinates. So this is the thing that we're looking for. Convert to spherical, convert to Cartesian, run the matrix on it, and convert back to uh, spherical. And by the way, the third number in this is equal to one because we happen to know it must be one. Uh, but man, you can't tell it from here. Um, I, I think even with simplify, it's not going to recognize the last coordinate as one. We don't need the last coordinate. Um, but it is going to be. Uh, but it's nice to see if we can simplify this down to one. Uh, and then we're into something um, amazingly bad. Um, I may weep on stream while we do it, but it works. Do, 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 do. I don't think I want to wait anymore. Okay. And of course, um, Mathix is not going to be powerful enough to do everything we need here. So we're going to go back to our friend. Remember who our friend is? Wolfram Cloud. He's free. Um, and I'm pretty sure we can use his results for free too. Um, I think I can actually bring up something we had before for once. Spherical distance. Open sesame. Oh yay, we might actually be able to reuse this. I'm so happy. Okay, let's make sure we got this all. Um, let's go get this all down here. We got x y z to spherical. So you're x y z. Uh, for those of you who care, this is the short form saying that if you want, instead of giving three separate arguments, you can give one argument that's a list, and it'll treat it as three separate arguments. This is a this is a mathematicism. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Well, actually, this is sort of different than what we're doing. So let me go ahead and. Cut and this is the only part of it that I think I'm going to need, actually. Control C. And then I want to create a new notebook. And we'll probably call it closed form or something if, if it lets us. So we have this. All good. All good. And now. The most hideous thing ever. This. Dun 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 dun. Okay. 
I'm kind of tempted to take the norm of this matrix, but I'm not going to. Um, so first of all, let's make sure that it's working at least as well as in the sense that it converts the uh, theta one phi one um, one you know converts theta one phi one uh, to where we want it to be. Um, no, that's not what we want it to be. Let's go ahead and do a simplified. The problem here is I think. Mathematica and thus oh there it is beautiful gorgeous love it um, and actually if we wanted to we could here um, say x y z back to spherical all this is going to tell you is that this point as by as by design is going to end up on zero zero uh, now we can do the same thing on point uh, on theta two phi two and what we should get out of this is um, the longitude will not be zero, but the latitude will be zero. So let's take a look here. And it would be nice if I were to actually print some results out of that. Let's do that again. Okay, by the way, you'll notice one thing sort of unusual here. This is arctan of a whole bunch of crap and then zero. This is really the arctan of zero, which is zero. Um, which is the because of the way we're doing... Th wait, 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 wait. Is that the latitude? Yes, it is, yeah. Um, hideous. Hideous, hideous, hideous. One thing we can do to help out here is we can... We do know that all of our coordinates um, are... Um, we do know that this thing is sucks balls. We do know our conditions here are um, uh, phi one. Let's see, theta one is greater than negative pi and less than pi. Um, phi one is greater than negative pi over two. And phi two is less than. No, wait, 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 wait. Theta and phi one is also less than pi over two. So we know that, and I think we're good with that. And then we just need to copy this line for theta, for two and three. Kind of wish that had done that a little bit better, but you know, whatever. We can indent even if you can't. So theta 2 also is between negative pi and pi and phi 2 is also between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 and finally the, uh, the value we're converting theta 3 also has these properties. Um, okay. All right, so now we have a bunch of conditions that we can use to simplify. Um, I'm curious to see if they'll simplify the, uh, the translation of uh, phi 2, um, which, uh, you know, we should be seeing a zero in the first coordinate. Let's see what that does. Oh, actually, I needed to add... That's not going to help. I need to put a cons in front of this. Simplify given these conditions. And it's thinking. Still thinking. Wow. Just wow. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so that's not great. Um, but it turns out we don't actually care. I mean, we can we can find the angle between f uh, f uh, you know th these two points easily, and that will give us the longitude of this point. The thing we really care about is if we have an arbitrary third point, where does that go? And so that's where that goes in XYZ coordinates. And we'll simplify it every step of the way. And we'll convert that back to uh, spherical coordinates. Of all that. And then after we do that, we'll simplify yet again, given cons. Um, so this should give us the hideous final answer that we're looking for. Is maxima also good? I, I do have used maxima. Wait. Oh, right. We d we're not in this anymore. We're, we're in here. Um, I don't remember. I don't think I've used maxima. I, I know it's like with m there's maxima, maxima, which is M-A-C-Y-M-A, uh, maple... I, I've been using Mathematica for so long, and I like it so much that, to be honest, I can't really give an honest opinion on... Um, I haven't used Maple for ages, um, so no, I can't really tell you. I, I just like Mathematica, and that's just a personal having used it a lot preference. Okay, here we go. Um, this is the translation of an arbitrary point the final coordinate is 1, by the way. I don't know if I can figure that out. but um, Of an arbitrary coordinate uh, to, um, to a new coordinate where uh, theta 1 and theta 2 are on the equator. This is presumably it. Um, And let me look at it in the... There's some Mathematica, something called a full form, where you can look at it sort of as a, a functional, uh, a functional um, thing, a functional representation instead of a nicely printed one. I mean, not that this is nicely printed, but... Um, so let's see. This is the form from which I could convert stuff. Um, And that is, wow, that is an ugly, ugly looking mess. Wow. Okay. I mean, I could convert this, I just don't really want to. I mean, and I can do it automatically, so it's not like effort on my part. Uh, but this is hideous. Um, I can't believe this doesn't simplify. Um, I'm just stunned by the ugliness of this thing. Okay. Hmm. Just, just wow. This is so freaking ugly. Now I wonder if the opposite of this function is actually easy. I don't know why it would be. Um. And the inverse of this would be, I guess, Um, yeah, I don't think I want to convert this into uh, different languages. It's way too nasty. And I'm not convinced it's the easiest way to do things, although I'm getting more and more convinced there is no super easy way to do these things. Um, so... 
Um, yeah, that... That is so freaking ugly. Okay. Trying to recover here. Um... I mean, this is this according to this this uh, work that I've done here. This is pretty much it. Uh, the new latitude and new longitude of the thing are going to be both very complicated functions. Um, geodesics using plane. Any great circle plane is z equal to because zero zero. Yeah, okay, that's that's fine. Um, I don't know how that helps us though. Um, Yeah. Don't see how that helps us. Yeah, and I've tried to throw a lot of different ways doing rotation matrices and stuff like that. Uh, and it just seems to all come down to this is not a simple problem. Um, okay, yeah. And I even have ways to test it here that basically, uh, that basically use random numbers for testing to make sure that it's working. Okay. Wow. Um. Hmm. And we have tried the cosine theta sine theta thing and done the dot product with the, the new vector and try to minimize that, and we couldn't get that done. Um, all right, let's give Wolfram Alpha another shot at that method. Um, at this point, I'm like pretty much sure it's not going to work. Um, and this new notebook will be called um, perpvec.nb. Oh, no, they want to know what this one's going to be called before they bring up a new one. This is going to be called, let's see, uh, matrix fail dot nb. Okay, excuse me. Okay, so what we want to do here is, this starts out so beautifully. Uh, S equals sy, t equals this. Um, plane perpendicular vector, the p-perp, is equal to cross st. Uh, the y-vector is going to equal uh, the cross of p-perp and s. Okay, let's make sure we write all that down. Um, it's not bad. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, and then the point at theta is going to be the vivec times sine theta. Um, no, I'm sorry. It's going to be s times sine theta. s times cosine theta plus yvec times sine theta. Still not very difficult. We will now confirm that lock of zero is, of course, S. Really? Wait. Oh, yeah, it'd be nice if I used the same variables. Um, if I'm going to use... Oh, right, hang on. Yeah, I can't use TH in one place and theta in the other. That doesn't work. Let's do this. Lock of zero is S Y, uh, S X S Y S Z. The lock of one will not be T because T isn't necessarily 90 degrees along the circle. Uh, the amount of value that T is along the circle is going to be the arc cosine of S dot T. So at this point, we maybe will hit T. Um, and maybe we won't. Um, 
And I, there's actually... Okay, let's just see what this does. Yeah, we're still not really, really getting that simplification. We do need to go ahead and add in some conditions here. Um, and our big condition here is that these are all real numbers. SX, SY, SZ, TX, TY, TZ. And when we come up to them, QX, QY, QZ are all reals. Okay. So now maybe that will help you simplify this. Nope, it will not. Um... Well, I guess the other thing we need to know here is um, the norm of S and Y and T are both 1. Um, already getting kind of ugly. But all right, let's do this. Simplify. Well, first we'll take the lock of arc this before we simplify. And we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. And then we're going to say... S Z squared is another way is you can always say it is one minus S X squared minus S Y squared because we know that the norm is uh, norm is one. Um, did that help any? Doesn't really look like it, but okay. And a little bit it helped, I think. And then the same is true of T, of course. T of T Z squared is uh, one minus T X squared minus ty squared. Um, and then I guess all of that we can simplify under the given conditions. Oh. Yeah, for some reason it won't prints these backwards for me. Okay, so this is not looking like... Um, not looking like it's going to simplify here. Um, okay. Um, now we could... Now we could use the randomized method I was mentioning earlier. And let's do that. So we'll say random rvec for random vector. And this is a little Mathematica trick here. Uh, random real. I think this is correct, but I want to make sure. Oh. Right, and then I want to actually have to print it out once to get something out of it. Um, I think this is the... Actually, it should give me no documentation. Yeah. Maybe if I did random wheel and then hit F1 here... Yeah, random real will give me um, one comma three will give me three random numbers. Um, actually, hang on. Um, yeah, let's do this. Minus one one three. This should give me uh, three random numbers between negative. There we go. Uh, and that's not quite. Oh shit. Um. I'm going to have to create a module out of this. Okay. So we're going to assign x to be random, but then we want to return a vector of norm 1. So then we'll say return x over norm x. Ugly, but it should work. Return x over... Oh, it doesn't. You're right. I'll be right about that too. 
Okay, hang on. There, that should be correct. Okay, good, and now we have a, um, so this can generate a ve random vectors of length one um, between, you know, somewhere on the unit sphere. Um, so now what we can do here is we can say S equals R vec. And we do want that printed out. T equals, now this is going to be a different R vec because each time R vec is called, it turns a different vector. Okay, and then we could say, um, and now we can see if we're getting uh, sort of what we expect. Wait, what? Oh, right, sorry, because this is actually, and this is actually TX, TY, TZ. I keep forgetting. Okay. Um, okay, hang on. I think this should change the values of S and T. So let's just really quickly make sure that happens. And when you do a print, you can put a semicolon in front of it because you're actually printing. Oh, there we go. All righty. Um, so we have S and T. Uh, we take the look of the arc cosine of S and T. Um, okay. What do we expect to get out of that? We expected to get T out of that, didn't we? Hmm. Alright, so let's be a little bit careful here. What does lock of zero give us? It should give us back S, which it does. Um, lock of pi over two should give us back... I don't actually know what it's supposed to give us back. But when we get to the angle between S and T... You should really be getting uh, back T. Unless, uh, you know, we're using any a flip condition or something. And we're not even getting close. That's what bugs me. Yep, not even close. Okay, we got a little bit close that time. But not really that close. Um... I'm tempted to do this, even though it's wrong. And if this works, I will be... Okay, good. Didn't, didn't work. Okay. So, let's see what's going on here. Um, plus y vec. Yeah, so the y vec is across the perpendicular vec. It really, really should, um, really, really should be equal. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Um, hmm. I mean, there's one other possibility because the, the arc cosine function is there's there's you know it can it can be it repeats itself, but. Um, And if this doesn't work, I've got one more little plan in mind. I'm going to use the vector angle function. All right, let's use the vector angle function. That's pretty close, actually. I don't know why it's so far off, but uh, let's try it again. Nope, it's not even close this time. Um, so I guess I'm confused. This thing starts off at S. Should move its way over to uh, T by the time we get to... Uh, have I defined it wrong? Let's take a quick look here. 
All right, we have S and T. The perpendicular vector is the planar vector. And then we take, okay, hang on. And, oh, uh, no, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. So P perp is the Z axis and, um, uh, so let's see. P perp is gonna be the, what we call the Z axis. S is gonna be the y, uh, X axis. So if you cross Z cross X, oh, that's a negative Y. I want X cross, I'm doing stuff with my hands, believe it or not. Uh, I want X cross Z, no? Z cross, no, Z cross X should be the positive Y axis. Um, okay. The only one other possibility is that I've got a negative sign off somewhere. Let's see what this does. Uh, no. Um. Tried the negative, tried the positive. Maybe if this works again, now I'm, I'm, I'm just grasping at frickin' straws. Yeah, no. Okay, that was kind of bad. We were hoping to get somewhere uh, deeper from here, and now we find out we can't even get to where we want to be, which is, um, which is having this uh, parameterization of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, great circle. Okay. However, we can do this. Theta goes from zero, well, we'll say theta times degree, to 360 in steps of 10. But before I do that, let me make sure I've got everything defined correctly. Yep. So if this works correctly, we should, s we should somewhere see, um, uh, there's S, good, good, good. And when we get to point 1.5... And the only thing kind of bugs me is it looks like, uh, this norm is bigger than, well, let's, I mean, if they're bigger, then we have a real problem, because that means we've really screwed something up. No, they are one. The norms are one, as I expect. So as we start from S, we get to about minus 0.23905, right there. The second coordinate is not even close, and the third coordinate is not even close. Um, I'm sorry, that's S. When we get to p minus 0.81. Um, Okay, um, well, another way to do this is to actually look at, um, we can actually look at the, um, the angle formed by, you know, um, TX, TY, TZ. So we don't need to print that anymore, but we do need to print S, we do need to print T, and then we need to print vector angle um, between S and T, 
And because I'm sick to death of radians, we'll say degrees. Okay, so 37 degree angle, which means about three into this, we should start seeing um, 0, 10, 20, 30. Okay, okay-ish. Nope, not really happening. All right, that's not good. Huh. So I was hoping Monte Carlo would show us that th this is the correct uh, uh, transformation that makes um, the great circle between S and T, um, but it actually appears to miss T completely, somehow. Um, perpendicular to, what's, if it's perpendicular to p-perp, it's got to be perpendicular to, um, it's got to be in that plane. <sighs> and the only thing we can think of is we're going in the wrong direction or something. Well, you know what, let's go ahead and be a little bit nicer here. We're going to go ahead and print out theta as well, so we can really kind of nail this. And it's still going to be wrong, but I mean, now it'll be wrong with more information. So it's 126 degrees, so somewhere where it says 120, we should start seeing um, this value. 0.76 minus, well, that's not too bad, actually. Um, but it goes from 0.76 to 0 0.80, so by the time we get to 0 0.89, now let's see if it's like 60 degrees is at 0.89 or something. So we're looking for where this uh, vector is spinning uh, becomes 0.89, roughly. The x value becomes 0.89. Um, huh. And that never seems to happen. Hmm. Let's give it one more shot. 76 degrees, so that doesn't look too bad. So we might actually have this, but the question is why, um, why doesn't it um, return T when we put in that exact uh, vector? Yeah, because I mean, this this is a ra this is a decent vector anywhere within the, cu the cube of you know two by two by two cube that's around the origin, and the parameterization should be correct. The um, hmm. I don't know. Okay. Well, I thought I had we I thought we had something there, but we do not. Um, we do know that our uh, hideous full matrix, uh, which I guess isn't going to simplify, uh, does yield um, correct results. We could use that, um, and we could just use that and you know put that in there. Um, And this actually does this full matrix testing, so um, yeah, we can be pretty sure that full matrix does what we want it to do. Um, and the biggest question I have is, is there a simpler matrix? This does not seem like it's the simple pos 
the simplest possible matrix. And um, and these would be the you know new line, new long new latitude. Um, these would be how you compute the new longitude and latitude. So let's let's go ahead and put this in here. God help us. Um, let's let's go ahead and cap these guys. And let's cap this guy. And then control V. Okay, and this says new lawn equals this crap. Okay. So the new long is it new LNG with the capital or with a uh oh yeah, camel cased. Theta one, phi one, theta two, phi two, and then as a trick, theta one, phi one. We should get back zero. And I don't know how we got that. There's another print statement there that I forgot to nail, didn't isn't there? Okay. Jesus Christ. Oh, this is actually the value of the new launch is this. Let's see if we can simplify that. Um, <laughs> hey, it worked. Um, and the new longitude of theta 2 phi 2 should also be, oh no, not 0. This will be the angle between the two. Um, yeah, let's pretend that's valid, that, that's good. Uh, I mean, it could be, I don't, I don't know. So the question I've been trying to avoid is, can we take this, I mean, the, you know, the result of multiplying by the matrix, and turn it into a nice, I can't really say simple function, but turn it into a function uh, that we could print in multiple languages. Um, okay. From zero to here, <laughs> what if we go from zero to pi two, then are we then full circle? Yes. Uh, so if I put in, um, if we're still doing this and I put in lock two pi, we should get back to S because two, two pi and zero are the same thing in terms of degrees. Um, this actually surprisingly doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. It doesn't look as bad as our full matrix. Um, so maybe some stuff did cancel out. Because um, I'm usually pretty good, good about putting these things in their final format. Okay. Um, so... All right, let's see if Mathix can give us our full form magic that we need to do this. Um, that's actually not that bad. Oh, again, we can't put a new line in there. That is bad. Okay. Now, can we do this in full form? So we can, we're in pretty good shape. <whistles> nice, I like that. Okay. Um, now let's go one step further. And we'll do the new lat. Yeah, this, this is going to be the ugliest solution ever, but, you know. Oh, what the hell am I doing? Okay, new lung, theta 1, phi 1, theta 2, phi 2, theta 3, phi 3, 
followed by new lat theta one, phi one, theta two, phi two, theta three, phi three. So if this is, this should be the, um, that. Full form, this may not, this might go off the edge. Oh wow, it's still on the page, I'm very impressed. Okay, now we're gonna go into, uh, now we're gonna really F with stuff. Now we're gonna go into Rosetta. Uh, BC functions, do I want Astro? I think we talked about this before and I didn't, I really couldn't decide if this was an, um, this is not an astronomical thing, so we'll go into BC functions. XML, okay, and let's just add our function right at the top here. Uh, function name equals, um, long lat to translated long lat, and even that's going to be a horrible name, but there's just kind of no way to do this. Active, yes, we want the function to be active. The nice way of printing this function is this theta 1, phi 1, theta 2, phi 2, theta 3, phi 3. The variables are these guys. And we're coming to the ugly part. And the variables are these guys. Description. Um, if theta one phi one. Okay. Longitude latitude theta one phi one are rotated to the intersection of the prime meridian and meridian, meridian, and the equator, and theta two, phi two, are rotated to be on the equator. Return the new coordinates of theta three, phi three. That's what this does. Uh, we're not gonna give it a test right now, but we are gonna do this. So the big deal here is the body, of course. If I can copy that all at once, I'd be really, oh, that is awesome. That is gorgeous. Now, if it's gonna, I mean, it, this isn't gonna work, but if it were, Let's see what it would do. Um, oh yeah, it's actually lang convert. Okay, and that's not what we wanted. So let's go ahead and change BC lang convert. Um, Do that. Okay. Now we should have. Oh yeah, I forgot we had other functions in here too. The very first one though should be. Um, here it is. So in theory, this is. the translated function. So, um, I don't think it'll work, but let's see what happens if we do this. Um, missing blah after argument list. That's not the problem I expected. That's just. Oh, yes, that is the uh, one ugliness here. 
uh, is when you use um, numbers, it tries to convert them in, like lat2 becomes lat2.0, which is ugly. So uh, let's go ahead and fix that. Um, and the way to fix that is basically we just change these to um, fact. Yeah, is that the problem with all of these? Is that the one that, is this the HR theta, HR theta, args, wait, vars, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, vars for this guy, vars for this guy. It's fine, 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 not fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make this function inactive because it has that error. And oh, that's the only one that has that error. Okay, well, and the one we're just doing right now, but we, we can fix that one. Okay, so that's probably not difficult. Um, so we had this. And I think we can just call these theta a, phi a, Theta B, Phoebe, who was on Friends, by the way. Theta C, VC, which sounds like feces. <laughs> it's funny. Um, theta A, Phi A, Theta B, we're going to say Phoebe again. Theta C, and feces again. Is that what I want? That's what I want. And hopefully now it'll, it won't uh, complain because of the... Uh, the uh and so the body is now this sucker. And this might actually work. Okay. Uh, let's see. Active... Uh, and we're now going to say the variables are a, 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 a. Okay. That's going to be our, and our vars are going to be just these suckers now. And I just realized there's a bigger problem coming up, but we'll deal with it in just a sec. Okay, groovy. Let's see if it works. Reference error pi is not defined. That is not an issue. I mean, it is an issue, but. Um, See, is it math pun in JavaScript? Yeah, that didn't really help, did it? Um, nope. That's probably not going to work either. Okay. Fortunately, I think BC Rosetta knows how to deal with pi, or this thing needs to. And let's see if it does. It does not. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. Well, that's the only problem with it. 
Actually, I can bring it up over here. Okay. Uh, pi goes to math pi R across the board. Okay, now let's see if it works. Math greater is not a function. No, I don't think it is either. Swarm that greater got translated as a um, as as a uh, as a angle bracket. No. Wait. So where do I actually use greater? That sounds like an if statement there. Okay. Hang on. Uh. What if? Greater than so long lat okay let me go ahead and go back to BC language it yep. BC functions.xml lat lung to ortho wait lung lat to ortho and I guess this does have an if condition in it. So for the temporarily, we will disactivate this one as well. Maybe that's why I didn't want to be dealing with this. All right, let's try it one more time. Math cotangent is not a function. This one I do know how to deal with. Um, because this has to do it quite a bit. It ha it, I think we do it for cosecant already. Or for, what's the other one? Secant. Um cotangent function. If the function is cotangent, um, we basically just copy this code, except cotangent is 1 over tangent. Uh, return bar broken. Okay. And I don't, uh, this works in a really weird way, but it does work. Okay, one more time. What, again? Oh, right, because every time I regenerate this, um, yeah, every time I regenerate this, it breaks. So let's see if we can add a little, um, um, I think I can do it, like, way up here at the top. Okay. Special cases, um, Rational numbers, lists. Okay, so these actually are conditions now. Uh, what I'm going to say here, if lang equals js, I'm pretty sure the js is, def oh no, no, it's JavaScript. Yeah, secant is 1 over cosine, that's correct. And I changed, cotangent is 1 over tangent. Um, so that's the one I just added. If the language is equal to JavaScript, uh, multi-line parse. Uh, what the hell is this thing being sent? Oh, f hogs lane. Um, okay, I don't know if I have a way of doing this then. Well, I mean, I probably do. Ah, okay, just saw the definition. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm jumping all around the place here. Uh, yes, I was trying to define cotangent because I didn't have it defined. Um, okay, okay. Um... Okay, and so this is our special case. Um, uh, 
Yeah. This, I think, is where we can put our special case for JavaScript. Um, func name body equals substitute pi with math pi locally. So that should replace all the uh, little, whoa, all the uh, small pies with, um, with math pies as it wants. Again, this isn't going to work, but let's see why not. Math good or manian is not a function. Well, that I know is true. Um, and that I'm going to actually, uh, that was a really bad decision on my part to try to create a Gudermannian function. Uh, so you are going to be marked inactive for using Gudermannian. And the nice thing here is this actually ran. Um, we haven't tested our new function yet, uh, but it actually, it actually ran, which is good. And now what we can do with it is we can mess with it. Um... So now we could say stuff like, let's see, maybe I should do more trigonometry. Sounds delicious with so much pi. <laughs> and it's infinite pi, I mean pi has an infinite decimal uh, representation. Okay, let's see here. Wait. Oh, those new chords only work for um, one latitude longitude transformation. This is the one that works for them both, if it does in fact work. Nope, that's new angles. That's also for just one. I guess mine's going to be way at the top here. Oh, wait. How do I decide what longitude, latitude? Here we are. Um, print. Long lat to translated long lat of... So we'll take the point... Oh, uh, we got to actually do frickin' degrees here, don't we? Um... Do I have a degree in here? Do I have the word degree defined? I do not. So I'll just define it over here. Um, let's see. If you have a degree and you want to convert to radians, you want this. So minus 106 times degree, um, 35 times degree, and I realize I can't capitalize it because I didn't declare it that way. Um, and then the other coordinate that's going to be the end of our journey will be uh, San Francisco. Minus 120 times degree, 38 times degree. And for our first test, we're going to actually see if one of these coordinates gets converted correctly. Um, okay, that would be... Right, right, the first coordinate, 35 times degree. So that should get translated directly to the equator. Um, also, because I'm getting bored, I don't want any more of these print statements in here. They annoy me. And I may need to make an option to say don't print the print statements. Okay, now let's see what this does. I have no idea. Not a number, not a number. That's not what I was hoping for. Okay, well, I can print the, um, this is really ugly, but it's not, doesn't need to be cute. I just want to make sure the variables are making it over here. Got not a number, not a number, not a number. Yeah, we rock. Um... Oh yeah, because this is math pi. That's the whole problem we had the first time. Interesting. So the return value here is zero, zero. I mean, e to the minus 17 is effectively zero. Okay, that's good. And let me get rid of the print statement I had here then. 
Okay, so good thing. Um, let's let's watch that again in slow motion. Okay, so it converts the first point to zero zero. Let's see what, how it converts the second point, which should be to zero something. Um, and no, no, right, because we use we're doing the longitude first. Okay, so the uh, longitude here was. Um, this is in radians, and so 57, flippin' hell. Hang on, I, I know I did a new source aliases. I give up. Okay, we'll get rid of the minus sign and we'll just add it ourselves. Okay, so about minus 11 degrees, 11.57 degrees. Um, so that's saying the distance between these two is 11 degrees around the world. Uh, and I think that's about right actually, but let's let's make sure. So that's 11 degrees around the world. Uh, that's 40,000 kilometers for 360, and that actually is correct. There's about 1,286 kilometers, or 803 miles between Albuquerque and San Francisco. Let's make sure, though. And uh, those aren't, uh, of course, exact coordinates either, but fill it in for me. Um, flight distance. Oh wow, we weren't that close. 1,088 uh, kilometers. Okay. Okay, 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 smart ass. Alright, okay, we get it. Why don't we go ahead and do a, um, use a little bit more accurate, uh, coordinates here. Um, Albuquerque's actual coordinates are minus 106.6 blah, 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 blah. And I think I'm way off on San Francisco, by the way, because I've kind of just guessed at that. And our latitude here is this sucker. And San Francisco is probably the one I got way off, because minus 120 degrees is somewhere on the west coast. Uh, so let's find uh, San Francisco. I left my heart there. Dun, 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 dun. 37.7 Oh, that's the, that's this thing. That's fine. And this thing is minus 122. Yeah. And then we want to know how you're going to translate um, basically what we just gave you. Um, this. See what this does. They should give us a number that uh, probably won't be, but should be. Okay, so that is, uh, uh, that's in radians. To convert from radians to degrees, um, We do this. And it's mine. I'm going to lose my freaking mind. So about 12.95 degrees around the Earth. We know that uh, 40,000 kilometers is 360 degrees around the Earth. So this is saying about 1,439 kilometers. And according to this, <whistles> still not that close. Oh, that's a driving time. Hang on. Um, I don't know what the driving time. 1,443 kilometers. 1,439 kilometers. Looking good. Um, so now the question is, what can we do with this now that we have this? Uh, <coughs> 
And the answer is um, we can now translate a waypoint like Phoenix to a latitude longitude, which will tell us two things. Number one, how far is it from the great circle uh, that connects these two cities? And number two, uh, uh, what point on the great circle is closest to Phoenix? So I think, um, I think this is going to work. We need a, needs a little bit more work, but we can work with this. Um, I've been streaming for an hour and 50 minutes, uh, and I am totally dead. Thank you for watching the stream, and please come back tomorrow, or whenever I decide to stream again. Or I don't care. Bye-bye.